right y'all now we're going to talk about uh youtuber logan paul and i need to refresh my cup and if y'all are wondering um if y'all can see this is oh this is the uh glue vine that i am uh consuming and i'm probably going to go back and buy some more i actually bought three cases each case has six in it because of course this is a uh winter wine for the most part and most people are only going to drink glue vine during the uh holiday seasons you know doing the you know pretty much december time right so it's reduced i'm not gonna lie yeah i went and got three and i'm probably gonna go back and get some more i have some amaretto over there but i try to use that only when i heat up the glue bond so no amaretto in the cup but back to uh logan paul so he is a youtuber youtuber he is a famous youtuber he has <clears throat> over 15 million and I did say million subscribers. Now, I did not know about him until this week. I'm going to be completely honest. And after I get done talking about him, I'm probably not going to know him after this. Because after kind of getting spun up on some of his material, both he and his brother, Jake Paul, and... I ain't even gonna talk about Jake. All I'm gonna say is that Jake Paul was doing a freestyle where he uh, freely was uh, dropping the N-bomb. So, I'm gonna let y'all have that one. But we ain't here to talk about him. But with his, <clears throat> but between the two of them, they do pranks and are just very, very childish and mature. And, you know, pretty much, you know, like, do it for the vine. Like, that's what it is. Just doing things for clicks and for views. So, not somebody that I would watch. But for what it's worth, he has the following, when I say following the subscribers behind him, he has endorsements and all of that other stuff. So the reason that he is a topic of conversation, and we're probably going to be on this for a second because with this particular um, topic, I do want to, I'm going to show you guys some videos and I'm actually going to give you guys some insight as to why this is such a big deal and why I even care. Okay. So, he went to Japan, for what reason, I really don't know, and he has been vlogging for every day, or has been um, putting out a video for every day for like 400 plus days. So this was one of those videos. He was in Japan, um, going to different places, putting on very traditional uh, Japanese garbs, acting completely idiotic acting like a jackass with no regards for what it is that he's wearing and the disrespect that he is bringing to this culture and at one particular point he goes to the japanese suicide force which the name should tell you everything and first and foremost i don't know why <laughs> you would uh, go to this suicide force especially filming what is the reason now they go he and his crew, and the light just came back on, but he and his crew, they go, right? So they go, and wouldn't you believe they stumbled across a dead body? Now, the initial reaction, I'm not mad about. Why? Because like I say there was a little bit of, of laughter on his part. Now, the female in the background was laughing her ass off, so now that one right there, that is all the way in the pro pro. But with him, I'm not mad because, I mean, it was a natural human reaction. Because you have some people, they see something like that, they're going to be scared out of their mind. You're going to have others where they're going to be like, wait, whoa, what the fuck? You have others where they're not laughing at the situation, but it's just how they respond to set situation. That is how he responded. Absolutely no issues there. But in the video, he has the person, records the person, all of this other stuff. And he claims that he wanted to do this to kind of, I guess, like put the spotlight on suicide and how that it is such a bad thing. But I do want to mention that in the title of the video, we found a dead body in the Japanese suicide forest. Set video got well over 6, 000, 6 million views in 24 hours. And the likes significantly outweighed the dislikes. Now, the original video on his channel is no longer up. Because he let it go within 24 hours. Because when I say social media, let that ass have it. Social media, let that ass have it. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys a uh, couple of news clips and then I'll come back. That parenting lure about one of the most popular stars on YouTube. Outrage is growing overnight about a video Logan Paul posted overnight. It apparently shows someone who took their own life, and ABC's Adrian Banker is here with the story. Good morning, Adrian. Good morning to you too, George. Uh, you may not know that your kids are watching this guy, but with a huge impressionable audience, this year he was ranked by Forbes magazine as one of the top entertainment influencers in the world. Major companies pay him considerable amounts of money to post eye-catching videos, but even he says his latest content was his biggest mistake. He has 15 million followers on YouTube. I'm glad you guys get to live with me. Where he posts a daily show targeting an audience made of teenagers and children. His influence over that group, noted by companies like Pepsi and HBO, who gave him endorsement deals. Come meet Amy and I tomorrow for the Pepsi Halftime Super Vine. But this morning, Logan Paul is in some hot water after he posted a video allegedly showing the body of a person who recently committed suicide. The video viewed over six million times in just 24 hours. It was part of a series Paul was posting from Japan. He visited an area on the slopes of Mount Fuji known as the Suicide Forest, then posted the video with the title, We Found a Dead Body in the Japanese Suicide Forest. During the video, Paul said, I think this definitely marks a moment in YouTube history because I'm pretty sure this has never happened to anyone on YouTube ever. The outrage was swift. Breaking Bad star Aaron Paul calling Logan pure trash. Game of Thrones star Sophie Turner calling him an idiot. Paul has now taken down the video and apologized, writing in a statement, I didn't do it for views. I get views. I did it because I thought I could make a positive ripple on the Internet, not cause a monsoon of negativity. I intended to raise awareness for suicide and suicide prevention. So this whole debacle is the top trend on Twitter. Now, speaking of kids, Logan himself has been making videos since he was just 10 years old. He's only 22, and this for sure is a reality check. Yeah, he is incredibly popular right now. Huge. Kids. Yeah. Although my kids say they like to hate watch him. Well, I think some people make fun of him. He, he makes millions of dollars in endorsement deals. I mean, he drives a $250,000 vehicle. But I, I, it's a real life for sure. This is a growing up experience. It needs to be. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching. Yes, wildly popular on YouTube with millions of kids watching all of his videos, endorsement deals from companies like Pepsi and HBO. But this morning, Logan Paul is facing more backlash for his latest video. I've made a severe and continuous lapse in my judgment, and I don't expect to be forgiven. I'm simply here to apologize. In a stark change of tone from his usually comedic videos, YouTube star Logan Paul says he's ashamed of his actions. For my fans who are defending my actions, please don't. They do not deserve to be defended. The social media influencer with more than 15 million YouTube subscribers Ow! Yeah. faces intense criticism after posting a video he shot in what's known as Japan's suicide forest, where he shows the body of a person who recently killed themselves. Many reacting to the fact that Paul makes jokes throughout the video. <laughs> Parents whose kids watch his hugely popular channel are outraged. One tweet reads, the worst part is Logan Paul's cult fan base is little children who just watch their idol laugh and joke as someone ended their life. He's a complete and utter insensitive idiot. The fierce backlash prompted him to take down the video. This morning, many question why YouTube, which told ABC News Tuesday it prohibits violent or gory content posted in a shocking, sensational, or disrespectful manner, didn't remove the video immediately. But I think that YouTube was probably blindsided, and it seems to have slipped through their moderation safeguards. YouTube says a billion videos are uploaded to the site every day. Just announcing in December, the company would have 10,000 employees monitor content after deleting over 150,000 videos deemed disturbing or featuring predatory comments just the month before.
It follows efforts to monitor what people can broadcast on Facebook, which launched a review last April after it took over two hours to take down a video of a murder. As for Paul, many want his channel shut down. You have to violate their community standards three times in order to be kicked off YouTube, but there's really no such thing as permanently banning someone from a platform. They might lose their subscribers, but there's nothing stopping someone from just opening another account. And YouTube has told us our hearts go out to the family of that victim. In fact, uh, they were mentioning exactly what so many wondered was, mm -hmm. you know, who is this man? Who is the body that was shown in the yeah. video? Uh, but you have to have a certain stipulations to violate those terms of service enough for them to shut down your account, of mm -hmm. course. Repeated uh, violation of the community rules or the terms of service. And also anything that would incite hatred or violence, harassment, identity theft with something that was a large violation. Okay. And many wondering if, again, any of the things that Logan did would mm. cause him to shut his site. Have down. we heard from other YouTube stars? Yes, one major star saying that he should put his money where his mouth is. In fact, they were saying that if he really did want to help, because you can, we talked about him laughing in the video, yeah. kind of awkwardly, a little uncomfortable, um, that if he really wants to help those who are the victims of uh, feelings that could lead to suicide, that he should make a contribution mm -hmm. to a charitable cause that fights suicide and fights suicide, uh, pursues suicide prevention. Well, that would be a step in the right direction. Thank you, Agent. We're going to bring in our chief business correspondent, Rebecca Jarvis. How, how important is he to YouTube? Hugely important. And he's one of many of these YouTube stars that's hugely important. 15 million subscribers. He's been making a 15-minute video a day, getting 300 million views a month. And he's making somewhere between 12 and $15 million off of these YouTube posts from both the advertising revenue and all of the people who are looking at this young people primarily. Yeah looking at these YouTube videos. Are you surprised YouTube hasn't taken action? I'm not surprised because I think that we're in a whole new world right now. I think that YouTube is right now trying to figure out what its position is. They, they have their community standards, but they're somewhat murky. Um, and as we heard from Adrian, what's interesting is now the YouTube stars themselves are the ones who are speaking out in this whole new world that we've entered into where pretty much anyone, frankly anyone, can go out and post a video online today and it takes takes a while for the community to have a reaction to that video and then have some sort of response to that. But for YouTube not even be the ones to take it down, it was Logan his Paul, choice. his choice to do that. How, how do you monitor? How, uh, it's so difficult. It's very difficult. I mean, they have a safety mode. Parents can, can use a safety mode on YouTube, and we can walk people through exactly the steps to do that. But I think also this, this requires conversations with families, and it's not easy. You can, you can monitor this on your home computer. For example, in that safety mode, if you go on, the parent can activate safety mode by clicking that blue sign. So where you log in to your Google account or your YouTube account, you click on that sign in the upper right-hand corner, you scroll down the page, the bottom of the page, there is a safety button there. You can click on lock safety mode on the browser. That way no one can sign in without a password on that particular computer. The issue here is this is so much more broad than one account or one computer. Obviously, YouTube has its own terms and restrictions. They say if you're in the United States, you have to be 13 years old or older to use YouTube. But again, this is a much bigger conversation than what parents can do with the We site. had the conversation at home last night, and the kids know that it's outrageous. They know that just about everything he does is outrageous. That's part of the fun, but they were they were horrified, I think like so many others were, by by this, by, by actually, you know, watching Logan Paul this, this go into graphic. that forest. This is graphic. Yeah. I think one of the things that people have not addressed yet is the fact that YouTube doesn't have to monitor a billion users like this. They know who their biggest stars are. So the important thing to note would be to hold their biggest stars accountable and to be monitoring those stars to let us know that they care enough about the content that these influencers put out there because they have so many subscribers and oh, the, yeah. the, the one thing that, that that he did say in his apology um, he said that he understood that the young people are defending him mm -hmm. like the young people who follow right. him were, were actually defending him where uh, older people are like were outraged and he said and he said you cannot defend this so even he is saying that even he he realizes he's that that's not it. he's owning up to it but it's great that you had the conversation with your girls because in talking to some colleagues here they went to their children and asked them and they were just like kind of like nonchalantly like yeah I saw it but they didn't know it until they asked their kids mm -hmm. if they actually had had seen that video and I can't imagine having seen that yeah. there's a desensitization
realization when you see all of this content that, that's that the people problem. forget yeah. what's real and, and what's important. Well, the important. kids think all of it's a joke. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. Thank you all. Mm. Thank you very much. Now, if you, if you guys do not watch our lovely T 2002, I would recommend you um you guys go watch her. Now, she's unfiltered, she's straight to the point, unbiased, and hey, what she says, she stands behind. So if you don't like that, then you might not want to. But she's the real deal. And I fucks with her. And she gave her commentary, and it was spot on. But there was one YouTuber in particular. I'm not going to post this video because it is long, and I don't want to take away from him. So, And actually, if, if I remember, if I forget, y'all let me know in the comment section if I forget. But I'll post her video, but also Gaijin Goomba. Now, I watch a plethora of stuff on YouTube. Gaijin Goomba, he um, pretty much does a lot of cultural analysis uh, videos in reference to gaming. And he used to be a teacher in, J in uh, Japan. And in his video, I've never seen him that disgusted and that upset. And it was clear. And that is because... He under he from his perspective he understands the struggle of being over in Asia, more or less Japan. He was in Japan, and having to you know it took him at least a year for the people that he lived with to eventually break their shell. And even as he got introduced to other you know groups, um, it takes time because there is a stereotype about Americans. <clears throat> so him having to break that. And you have to watch his. It was very insightful. But for him, it was all the work that I put in to try to sit here and change people's mindset on Americans. And he even went so far as to say white Americans. And this person comes over and fucks all of it up in such a short period of time. I implore you to go watch his video. I really, really do. Now I'm not gonna give my comment I'm not going to give my commentary or opinion just yet. Because I also want to make mention of I think the guy's name is LeVar Ball. I believe that's his name. If not, I, I mean I'm not really that remorseful for not caring, only because I don't do sports. It's not my that's not my shit. I just know I'm a Chicago fan, Chicago everything. But <clears throat> he is the middle child. He was in uh, China. <clears throat> so now we're going from Japan to China. But he was in China. He, along with two other students, because uh, like I said, I'm pretty sure if he's not in high school, he's in college, but went into a store and stole some stuff. <clears throat> Caught it on camera. Chinese people, the police, I'm pretty sure it was police, went to the hotel room, and pretty much they, in essence, got in trouble. And I'm pretty sure they were apprehended pretty sure and this was a big issue <clears throat> president donald trump even had some things to say and actually was able to work a deal to where the chinese government would release them so they can be taken care of back in the united states that right there is not saying that it's unheard of but that says a lot and for those of you who not who don't know how jail and prison is abroad especially in Asia, I implore you to look that shit up because it is a reason that they grab them to try to try them in America rather than over in Asia. It is a fucking reason. <clears throat> and if you feel me starting to get a little bit agitated, it has absolutely nothing to do with what I'm drinking, but it has everything to do with when I segue to Korea. But for him to go over there, him and two other guys, all three happen to be black, African-American, whatever we're going to call them. Because, again, every, everybody who is, a, you know, black skin, dark skin, you know, everybody identifies as something different, okay? Whatever. But <clears throat> that right there is definitely not a good look. And even in China, as it is in Japan, yes, there are negative connotations that, you know, are placed on Americans. And there are negative connotations placed on black people. And I implore all of you to go online and... 
more or less you two because um, I watched on Facebook that there was a study done. Somebody asking, you know, what are your perceptions? And this is in Korea, mind you, your perceptions of black people and why do you feel that way? Because media has a very strong part to play. But because of three idiotic dumbasses, <clears throat> not only does the Chinese people, because they already have a connotation about Americans in general and probably black people. I say probably because I, I have never been to China, so I don't want to sit here and put my foot in my mouth that way. But now you have three dumbasses that have perpetuated <clears throat> some very negative stereotypes. And now it is going to make it that much more difficult for tourists, both in Japan, speaking of the, uh, J uh, I'm sorry, Logan Paul, I'm about to call him Jake, and dealing with them in China. It is a very, very big deal. Very big deal. Now, <clears throat> Korea, I was in Korea for two years. From, uh, what, July 2013 to July 2015. Two years. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> and, of course, yeah, there are, there are certain people in Korea that don't see it for Americans. There are certain people in Korea that have their um, perceptions. Especially when it comes to people who happen to be my complexion and sometimes darker. <clears throat> but I can say that I never ran into it. And most of the time, I stay very close to Pyeongtaek, and I will constantly go to a um, bar establishment called Che's Place. Loved it. I love Miss Che. She is great. And it, we, like I said, we got so close that I even gave her one of my yarmulkes, and her assistant, you know, she actually opened up a chicken spot across the street, and I forget the name of the establishment, and I feel so bad. <clears throat> but I even gave her one and I would frequently go between her restaurant and Chase Place because like I said I loved them together and it was one of those where they showed me love <laughs> and I wanted to reciprocate that but going back to Chase Place right there was one gentleman <clears throat> who for the most part was a colleague had a hefty tab and literally left Korea did not say a word and, yes, yeah, stuff like that happens in the state, but again, we're not in the states. <clears throat> we are in South Korea. We are in Asia, okay? This right here, that left a real bad taste in her mouth. And it could be something like that where it's like, you know what? I don't want any more Americans in my establishment. <clears throat> it took one of my other colleagues, he just went ahead and paid off that tab, which my head was because I didn't know he did it until well after. He did it to kind of like keep the BS down to a minimum. That is why he did it. Now he did, now he pretty much kind of had an on site. We're going to have an issue when I get back to the States and I see this, bro, on site. <laughs> but <clears throat> that's just one of those instances where, you know, you make people look bad. You really do. Not to mention, you know, um, there are certain curfew restrictions in Asia. Because Americans have come over there, have raped the women, and I said rape, and I truly do mean rape <clears throat> the women <clears throat> that are in Korea. So certain measures had to be in place so it's not this big old strife between Americans and Koreans. And the older <clears throat> Koreans have a respect for the Americans, more or less the American soldiers, <clears throat> because of what was done. <clears throat> the younger generation does not have that reverence and does not care. And it is that generation that I care about <clears throat> because it is that generation that is going to get older and is going to set a lot of the parameters for other people, tourists alike, to go to Korea and have to deal with that. <clears throat> so I'm saying all this to say, yes, as fucked up as it is, one person can fuck it up for an entire group. And if any of you have siblings <clears throat> and y'all grew up <clears throat> around the time I did, shit, one, one sibling fucked it up, everybody got, like, if one person, everybody got that ass whooped. Everybody. It only took one. <laughs> so, it is upsetting. <clears throat> it, is, it is very upsetting. <clears throat> and if you never traveled abroad and you can't really put this into context actually I'll get to that momentarily but all of this was said you know I said he had his apology all that good I don't really want to say good jazz 
And he even went so far as to say he didn't monetize the video. But again, it has nothing to do <clears throat> with whether you monetize it or not. Because again, he get money. He get views. He ain't do it for the views. Probably did it for the fine. But he has a lot of <clears throat> teenagers and children that watch him. Some of which actually replicate some of the foolish things that he does. And for the parents, I feel for y'all. <laughs> but if I'm speaking to any parents, if y'all children are on... But yeah, if y'all have children and they have any access to the computer, y'all might want to talk to them about this individual. <clears throat> All right. Because that influence does reach, whether you want to believe it or not. Okay. In addition to that, the whole suicide, him going to the suicide forest, for those of you who have been on this channel for any bit of time, like I said, I've shared my story about my bout with being suicidal. And suicide is definitely nothing to play with. <clears throat> And with the suicide force, the whole purpose of it is you have people that go in there and they contemplate if they're going to do it. Because what they don't want to do is they actually decide to take their lives. They don't want to do it at home. They don't want to do it in front of their families. They don't want their families to walk in to see that shit. So they do it there to at least take that burden off of their family. And you have an idiotic, dumb son of a bitch that decides, hey... I want to go into the forest. Ah, it's a suicide forest. Oh my gosh, the fuck about it. What the fuck you think is going to be there? The fucking name implies it. That you run the chances of fucking seeing it. And natural reaction and everything, I got it. But here's the thing. You recorded it. This shit, if it was live, I would probably give him a bit of a pass. This shit was not live. This shit was recorded. It was edited. It was uploaded. That is what the fuck happened, right? So in this process, a lot of shit is added. Like when you, when people put up blogs and whatnot, a lot of shit gets left on the editing floor. That shit could have been edited out and never made. And he could have just talked and said, "Hey, you know, I went into the forest and I saw something. It changed my life. Da da da. <clears throat> Suicide is a big thing." And when it did his fucking PSA, and that would have sufficed. But the fact that you fucking record the shit, I don't give a fuck if he blurred the shit out. The fact that you recorded it. The fact that in your thumbnail, you show, like, it's one of those where it's just like, <clears throat> miss me completely with the fucking bullshit. And when I say Japanese people are in a fucking uprage, they are. And they have every reason to be. Because one thing that people need to do, <clears throat> you know what? Let me bring it down. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm getting a little too invested in this. I hope y'all understand why. Because mm, I had been to South Korea, so I've been in Asia. I briefly visited Japan. I'm currently in Europe, Germany. <clears throat> okay, so... I'm going to stop talking about it. I am. <clears throat> but. If Logan ever sees this video. Because again. I'm not going to sit here and go in. I'm not going to tear you down. Without trying to sit here. And build you back up. <clears throat> and for everybody else. I want y'all to pay close attention to this. Because it applies to any and everybody. First and foremost. If you travel abroad. The first thing you should do is research the culture and what is deemed respectful what is deemed disrespectful <clears throat> i did that before coming here to europe is learning like okay certain things all right that could be perceived as being respectful i want to try to make sure to not do that okay little things <clears throat> you know when i was in korea I did something disrespectful, and I did not know I was being disrespectful until I talked to, you know, some of the Korean nationals that I'm close to, and they was just like, yeah, that's kind of messed up. I was on a train. I didn't know I was sitting in the section that was designated for elderly, uh, pregnant, and um, disabled people. <clears throat> so people got on, and the respectful thing to do is you can sit there, but if you see somebody that is qualified to sit in that area, you get up. I did not know this, and I stayed sitting because I couldn't understand why everybody was looking at me crazy. So I unintentionally was disrespectful. Unintentionally. And I really didn't know because it was like my first time being on the train. Like, I was trying to explore. So I probably put a bad taste in people's mouth. And this is me being transparent. 
But what I'm going to say to him <clears throat> and anybody, when you travel before you travel abroad, research where you're going. Figure out what the customs are. What is perceived as disrespect. <clears throat> and don't do it. I understand in Asia that like certain, you know, you know, uh, places, certain people have quirkinesses about them. But one thing about Asia is they do have a sense of pride. They do have a sense of privacy. It's totally idiotic and uncalled for. Totally. So I say, please, before you travel abroad, do your research. Second thing to you, Logan. Whoever is in your crew get rid of every last one of them if anybody's on the payroll fire their asses if any of them are your friends get the fuck rid of them why do i say this a real friend would not have let you done that or would have at least advised you hey this is wrong this is stupid you may not want to put this up but they laughed and got a fucking good key key because you probably have yes men and women around you so that would be advised that would be advice. Just let it go. Y'all let me know how y'all feel.